The newest materials for the electronics and optoelectronics industries, part two. In 1994, the so-called Ordered Research Project was initiated in Poland. It was ordered by the Scientific Research Committee, the highest administrative organ in the country. It was a large project that assumed that a certain technological level would be obtained in Poland in the field of the most modern, small dimension electronic devices. Several centers took part in the program, including universities, the Polish Academy of Sciences, and research and development units like ours in Warsaw, Wrocław, and Torun. We managed to be included in the group of centers involved in realizing this project. In order to do so, we purchased a very modern and very expensive reactor for MOCVD epitaxy. The Institute had a few difficult years in making the payments for this reactor, but the project was completed and we were able to develop the technology further. Currently, we have two reactors for epitaxy because the long-term blue optoelectronics program became part of our research in the year 2000. Within the framework of these projects, we are working on the structure of the most advanced electronic devices. During the early period, academic and research centers both in Poland and around the world were our partners, recipients of our technology. Of late, we have attained a new level of quality with the development of new devices. For example, the so-called vertical cavity lasers, or lasers which use quantum particles. We receive orders for such development work from companies all over the world, but primarily from Japan which is quite interesting. I presume they order from us because, among other factors, we are located far away, and they feel safe that whatever we develop for them will not fall into the hands of their competitors. So much from the field of lasers utilizing semiconductor compounds. On the other hand, for the past year we've been using a reactor for the epitaxy of gallium nitride crystals as part of the blue optoelectronics program. We are also developing the structure of ultraviolet detectors. Our task does not involve lasers, as in the case of the Polish Academy of Sciences High Pressure Research Center, but on the development of detectors which are also needed by the marketplace. And here we are counting on working closely with Polish industry. These types of detectors are very useful in a market economy, as they allow for the analysis of combustion processes, all types of waste incinerators, boilers, large power and heating plants, plus the steel industry, require analysis and flame diagnostics. These types of detectors can be used for such purposes. Our small detector can serve as the heart of a large, complicated device, and together with other electronics, mechanization, optics, and a computer that will convert data captured by the detector into information which is useful to us.
This may be an area of cooperation with Poland's industrial sector. We are now in the laboratory for epitaxy of semiconductor compounds. Semiconductor com compounds, as opposed to silicon, which we are used to, are evidence of the development of modern electronics, which aims to improve the functioning of cellular telephones, the internet, and various signaling devices. We all often use red laser pointers, etc. Wszyscy używamy często tych takich wskaźników laserowych w kolorze czerwonym i tak dalej, i tak dalej. What makes this possible is the technology of semiconductor compounds such as indium phosphide and derivative materials, that is, multi-element compounds based on indium phosphide. If we add the remaining group 3 elements, such as gallium and aluminum, to indium and arsenic to the phosphorus, we can even have a 5-element compound, which is also used in the electronics industry. What we are doing here is called epitaxy, or the application of thin layers of monocrystal semiconductor compounds onto substrates, which are also monocrystals prepared earlier in the monocrystallization department. As we know, these plates are prepared by slicing a large monocrystal into wafers, which have a thickness of around 300 to 350 microns. After polishing, cleaning, and preparing them for epitaxy, such a plate is used as a substrate, as a crystallographic pattern for the epitaxial layer. The fact is, the substrate would not be needed if the epitaxial layer could be grown by itself. Nevertheless, a growing crystal requires a crystallographic pattern and a mechanical carrier, and that's the purpose of this substrate plate. Because the epitaxial layers must be extremely clean and made of minerals with very precise parameters, such as the concentration of admixtures, the lowest concentration of impurities, the chemical composition, thickness, etc., the substrate plates must also be very well prepared. That's why the plates come to us specially packaged in argon gas filled double aluminum foil bags, packed in special containers made of plastic which also doesn't react with semiconductor material. After unpacking, we introduce the entire package into a special chamber known as a glove box without removing the plates from the box. The chamber is filled with pure argon gas, and only there is the box opened. In other words, the substrate plate has no contact at all with the ambient air. Next, using gloves, it is inserted into the tightly sealed reactor where the epitaxy procedure is performed. Normally, we do not open this bag, but we're doing it now for demonstration purposes. I'm opening the reactor and inserting the graphite heating unit on which I will locate the plate. It is a plate made of indium phosphide, which has not been in contact with the air. It is a two-inch plate to which the graphite heating unit has been carefully attached. After being loaded, the plate is placed into the reactor. Once in the reactor, the plate is prepared for the process of epitaxy, which is controlled by the computer.
After loading the plate into the reactor, a series of processes begins. These are involved in the growing of this thin semiconductor layer or semiconductor compound, actually the whole heterostructure or multi-layers that we put on during the course of one process. To do so, we use this marvelous device where, with the help of many chemical reactions that occur in the reactor at a temperature of 700 to 800 degrees centigrade and under a low pressure of 100 millibar, the complete range of physical chemical processes leading to the depositing of the semiconductor material onto the substrate plate as required with the correct concentration of admixtures and of a given thickness. The essence of the process is that we must very precisely maintain the chemical composition and thickness of the layers. In light of present-day requirements for electronic devices, these thicknesses are on the order of single atom layers. The game consists of arranging atomic layers one atop another, each made of different compounds, in order to grow an entire complex of up to several hundred layers which will later perform prescribed tasks. Later, for example, they'll be con semiconductors for lasers, or a superfast transistor, or a sunlight or electric light bulb detector. All these processes mainly use chemical reactions occasionally physical. All this requires a sophisticated infrastructure, a complicated gas system which allows specific gas precursors to be introduced very precisely and exactly at great speed preventing gas inertia and their holding temperatures, pressures and flows measured and controlled. Here we see the thermostats that control the temperatures to one-tenth of a degree centigrade, which has a great influence on later stability or instability of the process. In effect, we obtain epitaxial layers, which we can partially measure during the process, although it is not straightforward. We actually do it after building the device, checking its parameters, lifespan, size of waves emitted, or frequency of the transistor. The reactor is made of basic blocks, the electronic section which controls the process automatically, manual control of the process is practically impossible as the growth time is, for example, 2.3 seconds, and it must be changed, say, 200 times within a period of several seconds. This would be impossible to do manually. The gas section is made of materials that ensure the highest purity. The inner surfaces of these links are electropolished to a super high finish so that no particle can become wedged or attached anywhere, so that there is no exchange with humidity or oxygen in the surrounding external air. And the reactor section, which is heated to a temperature of 800 degrees centigrade using infrared radiation. This is where the entire process of growing individual layers takes place. Doing all this under reduced pressure makes it possible to obtain uncommonly high parameters in terms of uniformity, replicability, and speed of gas flow over the substrate plate. We're talking about tenths of milliseconds, extremely fast, which allows growth to be initiated and stopped practically immediately. In addition, the plate is rotated during the process, which also improves uniformity 
and allows us to obtain a thickness of one, two, or five layers of atoms in a given sequence over the entire plate, which has a diameter of around 50 millimeters. This later impacts on the efficiency and de degree of yield when such a plate is used to make, for example, 10,000 laser semiconductor structures or super-efficient diodes emitting the colors red, green or blue.